Cloudopian. Today we are going to learn how to create AWS access keys and secret keys. We will first learn how to create static access keys and secret keys and then learn how to use AWS IAM roles to create dynamic access keys and secret keys which you can use to get temporary access to AWS. Once you learn that, I will give you some tips how to use a service called AWS Secure Token Service that allows you to dynamically create access keys and secret keys in the way you want. So without ado, let's start to learn how to create static access keys and secret keys. I'm in my AWS account. To create a static access key and a secret key, you first need to create an IAM user. To do that, you can go to the IAM section of the AWS console. You can search IAM and under services, select IAM. You need to go to user section and then add a user. Give a name for the user. Let's call it div user. Because we are going to use only access key and secret key, you don't need to give console access. We will use this user to access AWS programmatically. So click next. If you want, you can attach policies here or you can change the policies later. So let's click next. The user is created. I want to grant this user some permissions. To do that, select the user. And under permissions, let's grant some permission for the users. In this case, I want to grant him S3 uh, full access. So let's attach a policy directly and then search S3. And I want to grant Amazon S3 full access. You can of course customize these policies. To know more about IAM policies, users, groups, feel free to watch the video given in the description. Add permissions. Now you need to create access key and secret key. To do that, go to security credentials. And then here you have a section called access keys. So let's create an access key. In this case, uh, the easiest way to select is to use this other. It will give you uh, some information about how to use these access keys. Click next. Let's call it my developer keys. So it's now going to show you an access key and a secret key. The secret key will be shown only once. So remember that you save this one in a safe place. You now know how to create static access keys and secret keys. Let's learn how to use them in a real AWS environment. I'm in my development machine. The question now is how you can use this access key and secret key. You can use them in AWS SDKs like AWS SDK for .NET, Java, or alternatively you can use them in AWS tools for PowerShell or command line interface. So imagine I have a couple of buckets like this. I have three buckets in my account and I want to list them. If I go into my development machine and then type AWS S3 LS to list the buckets, I get a message saying that uh, I don't have access. So one way to give credentials uh, to access AWS is to type AWS configure and then it will pop a message asking for access key and secret key. So I can give the access key and secret key I created a moment ago and the default region to operate for these commands. And now my access key and secret key is globally set. So if I type AWS S3 LS, it will now use the default profile and list the buckets I have in my account. Now this is good, but where does this credentials get saved? It gets saved under default profile. So if you are in a Windows machine, I'm connected as an administrator. So under that you will have a .aws and this is the file that it saves this information. Now, if you type AWS configure again, you'll find that these credentials are saved. 
so you can repeatedly use them even in the future. Now for some reason, uh, if you delete this file, If you delete these uh, credential files and now if you type AWS configure, you will find that it will now going to prompt you again for those credentials. You can also save these credentials as a profile. So you can say AWS configure dash dash profile, give it a name. So let's call it due. And now if you provide these credentials, it's going to save them under a profile. So all looks good. And now if I call AWS S3 LS, it's still going to give access denied error, but you can provide three profile name. And now it's going to show the buckets again. You can also see uh, the age of the key, how long it has been there, like about 41 minutes ago, I created this key. Uh, it's not a good practice to use this static access key and secret keys. So one way to disable them is to go to security credentials and you have this access key uh, over here. You can go here and then deactivate it. So that way no one can access this. And once you deactivated this key uh, and if you are no longer using them, you can go there and then delete this key. Of course, I don't want this access key to be present in my account because you guys already saw uh, the values. So what I'm going to do is to delete it. You need to provide the access key ID, paste it and then delete it. You now know how to create and use static access keys and secret keys, but there's a small problem with static access keys and secret keys. The challenge is, if you lose them, maybe you accidentally put them in a GitHub repository or you write them into a log. And if someone access them, then they also can access your AWS account. What we need is something called temporary access keys and secret keys. Let's learn how to use AWS IAM RAWs to access AWS using temporary access keys and secret keys. I'm in my development machine. Now, if you type AWS S3 LS, you'll find an access denied error because there's no any credentials set for this machine. So even if you type AWS configure, you will see that there's no any access key or secret key. So this machine doesn't know how to invoke AWS because it doesn't have access to AWS S3. To grant access to this machine, instead of giving access key and secret key, which is cumbersome to manage, what I'm going to do is to assign a role for this development machine and then grant permissions for the entire machine. So this is an EC2 instance that I'm running in my AWS account. So I already started this uh, machine. So you can see that network for due is the machine that I'm running. And if you go under security, you'll find that I have assigned an IAM role for this machine. So let's go into that IAM role and then see how it has been configured. So as of now, it has some permissions, but it doesn't have S3 full access. So to grant S3 full access, you can go add permission, attach policies. Let's grant S3 full access policy for this. What I'm doing here is assigning permission to an Amazon uh, IAM role. If you go into the trust relationship, you can see that uh, this role trust Amazon EC2 service and the EC2 service can assume permissions granted in this role. And what I have done is I have assigned this due machine role for AP Southeast 2 to my development machine. So if you go into your uh, EC2 instance, you'll find that I have this IAM role assigned for that. If you forget to assign this role when you create an EC2 instance, you can always go select 
the instance under security you can uh, modify IAM role and then select the role that you want to attach into that uh, detail about creating IAM role and how to use them in EC2 instances is given in the description of this video so feel free to watch a detailed tutorial about IAM roles, users, groups, policies, uh, where you can learn more about these uh, permissions. When you start an EC2 instance, uh, so if you go to launch an EC2 instance, there's a section that allows you to set the uh, IAM role that is assigned for these uh, instance. So for example, if you go to advanced details, uh, it has a section called IAM instance profile. You can create a new IAM instance profile and then use it. I have already created this IAM instance profile before. So if you want to start an EC2 instance with a role already assigned, you can use this uh, section and then assign it. So because we already uh, assign a role for the instance that I have here, and it has the permission Amazon S3 access, so let's go and then try to uh, access S3 now. So as you can see, if I type AWS configure, you'll find that it doesn't have any uh, IAM uh, credentials in this uh, profile. But because I have assigned a role for this machine, if you now type AWS S3 LS, it's going to use the role assigned for this machine and then invoke the AWS S3 APIs. You can also check uh, how this API credentials is uh, selected. So if you type AWS S3 LS dash dash debug, it will show you a detailed list how the API got invoked. The good thing is now you don't need to have a static access key and secret key. Uh, the permission comes from a role assigned to the EC2 instance. You may now ask, Hey Shri, we use AWS IAM role, but I didn't see any access keys or secret keys with IAM roles. Wait a second, I'm going to show you what happens behind the scene when you use AWS IAM role. I'm in my EC2 instance that I use for my development purpose. And if you go into its metadata service, which is available in any EC2 instance under this specific URL, provided that the metadata service is available for you and enabled, if you go into the IAM section, you'll find there's another API you can invoke called security services. So let's go there. And here you'll find the IAM role that we have assigned for this uh, EC2 instance. So if you go here, you'll find that it gives you the access key and secret key that it used behind the scene when you invoke any AWS APIs. The only difference here is that this access key and secret keys are temporary credentials and it has an expiry. The beauty is the service itself automatically rotate these keys and you don't need to worry about expiring these keys. So unlike static access keys and secret keys that we created a moment ago, these keys are temporary access keys and secret keys. So for example, if I go into my command line and then type AWS S3 LS with debug, it will give me a detailed log how this API got invoked. So let's copy all and then paste it in a command line to understand it. Here you'll find the security key that it used. And this security key, in fact, came from that metadata service. So let's search whether this security key is available on my log file. If I go here and then search for this content, you can see when it invoked the APIs, it actually behind the scene use this security token. And that's how the IAM role provided access to AWS services. So although you may not see the IAM role using access keys or secret keys, behind the scene it does use access key and secret keys and a token. The only difference is that these are temporary access keys.
You now know how to use static access keys and secret keys and also how to use dynamic access keys secret keys with the help of AWS IAM roles. Wait a second, there's a one more service you need to learn. It's called AWS Secure Token Service or STS. That allows you to dynamically create access keys and secret keys and you can customize the kind of permission that you get with those access keys and secret keys. I have given a detailed description of that down in the description of this video. Remember to go there and then check it out. You have really good learnings that you can get about AWS access keys and secret keys. Hope you enjoy these kind of videos. Remember to subscribe to the channel and thumbs up. Wish you a fantastic cloud journey. See you next time.